Alright, so we're doing this again. This is going to be a tutorial about how to use Fire Alpaca. I made this specifically for my graphics design class and like it was the audience was just going to be my teacher and the students in my class but I in the process forgot that there are other classes that he might show this to and also also I like kind of forgot that like my classmates aren't stupid they're just quiet. So I go over some some really really simple things and it was just a brain fart on my part so if you see something there are some things that I will, that I go over that are just not new information, basically. When you first get to Fire Alpaca, you'll want to either open up a previously saved file or create a new file. This can be bypassed if you have a file saved in MDP format, which is the automatic file type Fire Alpaca saves in. By trying to open up that file, it'll open up in Fire Alpaca. Assuming you don't have a saved file, you'll have to make a new file, which will bring you to this window. Here, you'll have to select the different canvas types using the tabs at the top. The difference is that Comic has guidelines for making printable comic pages and animation is built for animation. You'll be using standard a lot. At the top is where you can adjust the width and height of your canvas and the units that they are in, but you also have a history section that displays the previous canvas sizes you've already created in case you want to use them again. Here you can select whether or not you want a transparent background and change the DPI value. If you already have a file you want to edit, you'll have to open it from your computer. It pulls files directly out of the computer's files, so it might be worth it to create a folder for your files specifically. Save is pretty self-explanatory. If your canvas is untitled, you'll have to click Save As, which will give you a window where you can save the name of your work and also choose the file type to save it as. The program also doesn't save automatically. If it crashes, you will lose some work depending on how the program crashed. And before you close an edited file, which includes flipping the canvas and turning on and off layers, the program will remind you to save. You can also export your work, although I don't use it. I've never used the rasterize options, and this option is for animation. Edit has options to copy and paste. What is copied is whatever's on the layer you are on, and it'll be pasted onto a new layer. These options here are also seen under the drop-down menu for layer and in the navigation window. The difference is that edit and layer affect the file. Layer affects the specific layer you're on and edit affects the entire file. Image size and canvas size do have a difference. First of all, the windows they pop up look different. Changing your image's size affects your canvas space, but keeps your work as the way it was on the canvas as long as you check the constrained proportions box. Canvas size will not expand your image to fit the canvas and does not have a constrained proportions option. If you want to make your canvas smaller, it'll also crop whatever is excluded from the box in the preview unless you uncheck that box. The layer option is analogous to the layer window. Literally all the important things like duplicating and merging layers, choosing layer properties, etc. you can do in the layer window. The only one that isn't listed is rotate and move. Move moves whatever is on the layer to the area of the canvas that you select. If you choose a corner, it will bring your layer as close to it as possible without passing the canvas borders. Rotate also includes flipping the layer and rotating it by a specific degree, but rotating it like this will make it blurred. Snap and Tool are accessible without having to click these. Snap refers to this option which makes your lines conform to like a stencil almost. Tool refers to this toolbar on the side. For filter, the first three are for editing the color of the selected layer. The next three I've never used, but these three are for creating extreme blurs on whatever layer you're on. Gaussian blur and lens blur are kind of similar, but I believe Gaussian blur works more like the gradient tool, where it has a radius and can create a foreground and background. Motion blur gives you this cool compass looking thing that you can change to create motion in a direction. Mosaic makes your layers pixelated. I haven't figured out extracting lines, but it does this thing. Cloud, sand, and Japanese pattern utilize both of your selected colors. Cloud and sand are similar in generating a texture. Japanese patterns gives you a long list of patterns which you can further customize in this menu. Color exchange just swaps the colors and random color, self-explanatory. The size, angle, and density are pretty self-explanatory, and transparent background makes it so that one of the two colors doesn't show up and whatever is underneath can be seen. These next three create effect lines that are usually seen in webcomics. Select does the exact same thing as the select tools in the sidebar. Color is also just the same as the color window, but the transparent option will allow you to swap between your primary color 
and this checkered box on the side. When you see these white and gray checkers, it means that it is transparent and when exported, the checkered area will be invisible instead of you having to edit the white space out. When the transparent option is selected, you can use it in the same way as an eraser, except you cannot use your secondary color. Swap swaps your primary and secondary color. This can be achieved by clicking on the secondary color in the color window. Initialize just sets your colors back to black and white. These two change the view in the color window. And lastly, you can create palettes, though I've never used them. While we're on the color window as well, you can type in specific RGB values, and if you click on this number here, you can copy the color ID. For the brush option, you can control these through the corresponding brush windows, brush, brush size, and brush control. It's just easier to use the windows. View is extremely important. These first five can also be found in the navigation window, with the zoom shortcut keys being similar to photo P and vector, and fitting to window size being control and zero. These magnifying glasses control your zoom and this empty one fits your canvas to the window. Rotating and flipping are also in the navigation window with this loading button looking thing undoing any rotations. This option is to flip your canvas temporarily to see if anything looks strange when mirrored. Since we're on the navigator window, dragging around in this preview area is similar to the hand tool. Back to view, I'm not sure what these options are, but I'm pretty sure pixel grid applies to when you zoom in extremely close and a grid will show up to defy the pixels. These are for comic canvases. These control the background of the canvas. Name is concerned about the checkers. It's because the transparent background was checked. You can get a white background and change the color of it, but when exporting your work, it will show up with that background and you'll have to remove it if you do not want a background. These last options are for animation. Window is where you control all of these windows, checking them on and off toggles whether or not you see them, and you can also just X out of the windows. Clicking this will separate them from the columns. You can move them around in any order you want and shrink their width and height by going to the edge like normal browsers. If you have multiple files open, they will show up at the top as tabs, which you can switch through them. It is just right clicking and selecting close. Help is help! This is the drawing icon which provides you with brushes that will mark up your canvas as well as an eraser. The one below it provides brushes for erasers only. These pixels in a line just create a pixelated line. This is a shape tool. There is a gradient tool which provides a few different options for the gradient. These two only use one of your selected colors and the default one uses both of your colors. The gradients only blend as far as you drag the line and in that direction too. There's a fill bucket, a tool to move the items on the layer you're on, and select tools, which have a couple of options. Rectangle select is like the shape tool, but just selects anything on the layer that is within the shape. Lasso select requires you to draw out your selections and will auto-close the gap if you do not close the distance. You can add to your selection by holding down the shift key and exclude part of your selection by holding down control. The magic wand selects anything of the same color. You can change it to using the entire canvas as a reference versus just using a layer. This is also the case for the fill bucket. Span the selection a bit like the fill bucket, which will bleed further than whatever you select by a few pixels, and you can only draw inside the selection once it is made. One of the best things about select is the transform options. You can deselect here as well as just dragging a select on the outside of your canvas space. The transform options are like those from PhotoP. Basic Transform allows you to flip, rotate, and distort your image. These options control how smooth the lines are. The default keeps everything the same. Free Transform allows you to distort your image on a 3D plane as well as just slanting your image. Mesh Transform absolutely warps your image depending on where you drag these points. A bit like the shapes in Vector. These symbols match the eraser and pen tools. They work similarly with the pen select, allowing you to paint the area of selection with the same properties as the selected brush. You can have airbrush selections and you cannot select when on the eraser. And the eraser just erases part of the selection that you don't want. Text tool brings up this window where you can select a font. Most fonts are literally the same until you get towards the bottom of the drop down menu. And the fonts with the at symbol in front of them means they'll be sideways. Text spacing shrinks or increases the amount of space between each letter and line spacing does the same thing but it applies to if you have a second line of text on the same layer. Text, like gradients, automatically use the colors that you have selected, but you can manually change them. And to have outline texts, you have to increase the edge width. The last ones I know how to use are the eyedrop tool, like the one in PhotoP. It has a shortcut if you right-click over 
a color, but it may not work on the school computers, and this hand tool, which you can use to move your view to a different part of the canvas without editing what you've already done on the canvas. Basically like the navigation panel. Going to this part of the program, these arrows are your undo and redo buttons. Shape controls what shape you make using your brush, like the shape tool and rectangle select, but with more options to make lines, and these are also not filled. To create polygons and lines, you'll have to double tap once your shape is mapped out. Stabilizer or correction just smooths out shaky lines. The brush control and brush windows are important to have together, as you can edit the properties of the brush here. They'll have more or less properties depending on the brush chosen. This bar controls the opacity. You automatically get a whole ton of brushes, but you can add, duplicate, delete, and create folders to organize your brushes just like with layers. I also recently found out that these colors are to differentiate between the types of brushes. For example, the erasers all have a white square and the pens all have a black square. When selecting a brush, you'll get a small cog that'll let you edit the brush. Its name, type, blending mode, which is the same as layer blending modes, the size it'll always default to when you first start the program, and it has a tab here that allows you to change its texture. By dragging the brushes around in the window, you can change the order they come in. Adding a brush gives you a couple of options. You can create your own brush, and add it using the add brush script i believe and you can also download a brush from the brush store which has a bunch of options and you can use them right away so layers this controls the opacity these blend modes control how the layer interacts with the layers underneath it and blend layers and side folders will only affect the other layers within the folder unless pulled out of the folder entirely protect alpha is when you've already drawn something on a layer and want to add something to what you've already drawn. However, you can't use the eraser, blur, or other brushes similar to those with Protect Alpha. Clipping is the same thing except on a different layer, and you can use eraser, mix, blur, etc. here without changing the layer it's clipped to. But if you go crazy, it'll look funny when you unclip your layers. You can also clip layers to folders and they'll affect everything within the folder. Adding a layer in between a normal layer and a clipped layer will just create another layer clipped to your normal one, so they're stackable. Folders can be put within folders, and if you delete a folder, everything inside will also be deleted, and this also applies to when you duplicate folders. Lock does the same thing as it does on Vector. You can't even delete a locked layer. You've already seen these buttons in the brush window. These two create special layers. The icon with an 8 on it makes every color a different opacity of the default color, and the icon with the 1 on it creates pixels in the set color only. And you can set the color, but it defaults to black. This option merges layers. To maintain blend modes after merging layers, you must merge them with normal layers. And if you merge two layers with differing opacities, the opacity of the top layer will change according to the opacity of the bottom layer. Brush size is not as important since you can adjust it in the brush controls. To save layers as a PNG, you'll have to flatten them, but the program will just do it for you. So the next time you open up that PNG file, it'll just be one layer.